Hello everyone, I'm Delta Alpha Zulu, and I'm in the process of doing a build journal for my Halo ODST cosplays on the 405th.com. Another user asked me the great question of how do I cut up large models to fit onto smaller build plates for 3D printing. It's too large of a topic to fit into a simple form post, so I decided to learn how to use screen capture software and make a video showing my process in preparing SDLs for 3D prints. This tutorial will go over the basics of cutting up 3D models, a short look at keying models, cleaning up models for export, and issues I've come across in these processes. First things first, we'll need to have Blender and we'll need to open it, like so. If it wants to open, there we go. Next, we'll need to open a new general file. Then we'll go up to edit and look at edit and look at preferences we'll go to our add-on section and we'll want to type in 3d and make sure we have our 3d print toolbox selected then we'll also want to make sure we have our bool tool set up here so with those two we're ready to cut some 3d models so we'll go ahead and close out of that we don't really need this object here, so we're just gonna go ahead and delete this object. Then we'll need to import our STL file. Now I'm gonna choose a file I know won't have issues with the cutting tool, and later I'll show an example of one that I had issues with. So for the first file to slice, I'm going to go up to my file, and import an STL, and I am going to go to my ODST files, this one's just going to be in my general 3D files and my armor section. I'm going to use a Mo Sizzlack template that's available on Thingiverse. This is the one I used for my ODST cosplay for Fan Expo 2022. So it, I cut it up on a Ender 3 Pro. So it was about eight pieces total. So I did a lot of this cutting. So we'll go in and we need to find just the regular with no visor. And we can't see it right now. It did load in. We can see up here it's all loaded in. We need to zoom out a little bit on our scroll wheel. And it still isn't here. Well, it's a lot bigger than I thought. So there it is. So if for some reason it doesn't show up in your, in your build area here, you can right click you can check and make sure you're clicked on it over here. Go over to object. We'll go to set origin. And then we're going to move our geometry to our origin. So there we go. Now it's kind of cut through the floor of it. That's okay. If we look at it, it's actually really good because it's on a, on a great section of our X and Y plane. So there's our model. It's all set up. And now we're ready to cut it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this back section here. And to do that, we need to have a plane added in as our cutting instrument, basically. So we'll go up here to Add. We're going to go to Mesh and Plane. So we're going to add our plane. It's kind of small, so, you, so we can't really see it. So we're going to, I use S to scale. There's also this button here. S is just a little bit more convenient once you're doing a lot of these. So we'll hit S. We'll scale it up. Click out. And we'll do S again because it just kind of, dramatically increases the speed at which it does it. So that looks about good. That goes over our whole helmet. That's about what we want. All right, now that we've got the plane, we're gonna keep, make sure it's selected. And we're gonna go up here and we're going to go into edit mode. Now that we're in edit mode, we're gonna come down here into this section right here. We wanna use the loop cut and not the knife. So make sure you click on the loop cut. And now we can cut it in one of two planes there or there. We want to cut it right here to get that back plane. So we'll click on it, and we can actually move it about to where we want it. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's turn it a little bit. That's a little off from where I want it. So I'll just move that one and use it somewhere else. And I'll add a few others here just so that way we have something to work with. So I'll add one up there too. All right. Now that we've got a couple little edges added in, we can move those edges. We need to make sure that we have the select mode is for edges, not for the points or for faces, but just for edges. We'll go to move, 
and we'll just begin moving our edges to where we want them to be to cut out our part. So we got that edge kind of where we want it. Move this one over. This will be our back cut. And we can go into here and see about where we want it. Move this one over up. This is really just going to be a rough cut, so I'm not taking too much time. You can take as much time as you need, and I especially recommend doing so on curves such as this earpiece. When I did this cut, I probably had several dozen edges to make this nice and smooth. But let's go back here. That looks pretty good. We'll move that over a little bit up. That cut looks pretty solid. Make that one there. And we'll move that one over. We don't let's not have in our cheek piece here. So we'll have that one over there. Scoot it back a little. And zoom out a little more. I made a little few I actually made too many edges here, but that's okay. We'll just kind of keep adjusting them over to get it right exactly how we want it to be. So Move it over. I do have to mention this is my first video making, so it's going to be a little rough. Please bear with me. It's fairly new to this, but that looks pretty good. Now, we look pretty good. There's a little bit of like uh, graining in right there. If I was doing this for printing, I would adjust it down to where it's nice and pretty all the way around. But for purposes in learning, this is this will be fine. All right, so now we got all that done. We got what we're going to cut out ready. Let's go back into object mode. And we need to actually give this some dimension to cut with. So we're going to select the plane, not the helmet, the plane. We're going to come over here. This little wrench here adds our modifiers. So we're going to go to our modifiers, add modifier. And then we're going to look for the solidify modifier, which is right here under generate. Click on that. Now, what it gives you initially is uh, substantially too thick. We're going to cut off way too much material than what we want. So we need to go here to thickness, and we're going to change it down. And the number I always use, just because the tutorial I learned this from does the same, is 0. 0.0006. Don't know why. It's just a random number. It works, so I'm not going to change it. Enter. So now, yeah, that's a much better cut. That's going to be next to nothing off of the model, so it should all fit together pretty well. So now we're going to go up here and we're going to apply our modifier. So now it's applied. Okay, so next step. Now we're actually going to get to the cutting. We're going to select our plane, and then we're going to shift-click our helmet. Then we're going to control-shift-minus. It may take a second depending on the complexity of your model and your system, but... This is about what it'll look like once it's done. The plane should disappear, and you'll see just that little bit of a cut where our plane cut through. All right, now we're going to go back into edit mode with our helmet selected. So now we can see all the vertex, vertices and edges and everything and faces from the helmet. You can see that yellow, that orangish yellowish line there is where our cut has been made, but the component's still attached. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go A and select everything. We're going to hit P. And we're going to separate things by loose parts. So now it's a separate piece. We can look up here. Now we have two pieces. Great. Let's go back into object mode. And now we can actually, we'll click out of that, we can hide our piece we just cut, or we can hide our helmet. So let's keep our helmet hidden. And now we're going to get into keying. So with keying, what you'll want to do is you'll want to figure, okay, I want to put keys all through here and here and up through here to make a connection point for so just to index the rest of the pieces together for gluing and things like that. So what we'll do is we'll go in, we'll change our origin. So we're going to click this cursor here and we're going to set our origin to that point right there. That's where we're going to put our key, our first key anyway. So we'll go to add, we're going to go to mesh and we're going to choose a cube. All right, so there's our cube. It's a little wonky for where it is, so we're actually going to turn it. 
right here to make it kind of line up more with how it would set in place. All right, so we got a nice cube setting there. It's kind of at a good angle. We're going to keep a, keep the cube selected, and we're going to go into edit mode for it. Now we're going to select a face, the very front face of it here, and we're going to make it smaller so that way it fits in to the slot we're going to make for it later a little bit better. So what we'll do is we'll go S to scale again, and we'll bring it down a little bit. That should be good. All right, so now that that's all brought in, we can go back into object mode. Now we need two of these, one for the key and one for the key slot. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it. We are going to copy the object and then we're going to paste the object exactly where it was. And what we'll do now is we'll make the key slot first and then we'll make the key because we need to shrink the key a little bit more than the slot to leave space for things like adhesives and things such as that. So let's go ahead and hide one of the cubes. We're going to hide our back piece, and then we're going to show our helmet. All right, so now we see our helmet. Ooh, we jumped pretty far, didn't we? Let's get back over here. So we see our helmet, and there's the key. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same thing we did to cut out the back section. We will select the key, and we will shift-click the helmet, and then we're going to control, shift, and minus. And if we did it right, we now have a key slot, which looks good. That's a good-looking key slot there. So what we'll do now is we'll hide our helmet again, show our back piece, and show our copy of the cube. All right, so now we need to make the face even smaller to have that extra space. So let's go into selecting our key. We'll go into edit mode again, same deal, select the face, and we're going to scale it down a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Back into object mode. All right, now we're going to basically fuse this key with the back component. And what we're going to do is we are going to select the key, shift click, select the component, and instead of subtracting the key, this time we're going to add it. So we're going to go control, shift, and plus. All right, so now it's a connected component. It's not separate, so we don't back to our same two. And when you go back to showing that, they should line up perfectly. So that's keying and cutting. Now we're going to work on exporting a file. So that way we can make our STL file and get it ready for print. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to click on our component. We're going to drag out this over here. This will show us our toolbox. So we're going to go down to 3D print. We're going to go to cleanup. We're going to make it manifold. And this time we got lucky. It didn't have to modify anything. Sometimes it'll be like modified 12 edges, 12 vertices, and 12 faces, something of that nature. You want it to be at zero, so just keep doing it until you have zero. Sometimes it'll cause issues. I haven't run across that. There are other videos that you can watch that show you what to do if that happens. I just haven't personally run across, so I have no experience in that. All right, so we're all manifold. Now we're going to export the file. So we'll click on the little file folder here to choose where we're going to put it. We are going to go back into our ODST files, back into 3D files, armor, helmets. And this, when I made it the first time, this should be called the neck. And let's just go with the male section of that. The reason I have it separated into male and female sections is because I had to make eight pieces. The neck was initially two. So I had the male key side and the female non-keyed side. So they'd fit together. It's more or less just to keep track of everything. So this is where I want to put it, except. All right. Now we're ready. We want it to be an STL. That looks good. Let's export it. And then what we'll do is we will minimize our blender, go into that ODST file, and make our way through 3D files, armor, and helmet. We're going to go to the helmet, the neck mail. And that component should be right here. It'll come up as a modified file untitled. Click on it. And that should open it up in Cura. I use Cura. Use whatever slicer you like. It doesn't really matter. So it'll blow, load in. All right, there's our, there's our piece. And there's our nice little key. So the key looks good. We're not having, doesn't look like we have any real weird issues with the print. So that all looks good. Let's close out of that. We'll close out of that. Let's go back into Blender. 
Now, what happens when the slice doesn't work? I'll show you that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and make a new general file again. We're not going to save this because I don't need it. Let's go ahead and delete the cube. This time we're going to use a more detailed file made by NerdForge Design. He did a, an excellent job making this ODST helmet. And I need to go to import. Now we're not going to use an STL file because this one I know is an object. This is an OBJ file. So we're going to go to our desktop ODST. It's going to be under NFD files. So we're going to go to this ODST helmet. We're going to go to the hollow version of the helmet and we're going to select that one. Let's import that OBJ. It's going to take a little while because it's a more complex file. And there we go. There it is. And it's a good looking file. So we're just going to cut this one in half. I've got a 500 by 500 printer. It can cut, it can print this thing in one go, but I don't want to use much filament. So we'll cut it in half. So what we'll do is we will go to same deal. We'll add a plane. We're going to use S to scale that plane. We can stop there. S again. So it's a nice, a much bigger plane. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to rotate this in the Y 90 degrees. So we get a nice flat split. We're going to check it on the Y plane. Yeah, that looks like it's in the center. Good enough for me. Okay, so same deal. We need to go down here and solidify it. So solidify, same deal, 0. Point, I'm sorry, 0. 0.0006. Solidify, go into apply. Looks good. All right, so now we'll shift click the helmet. Control, shift, minus. It's going to take a little while. There it is. All right. So if we look at it, we do look like we cut it, but let's go look at it in edit mode. Now in edit mode, we can see that, hey, for some reason, it didn't cut the chin piece. All right. So what happened there? Sometimes when you have a complex enough file or if the file's orientations are weird enough, it confuses Blender and Blender doesn't really like that. So what we'll do is we'll go back in object mode. We'll control Z until we get our plane back. So there's our plane. This time, what we'll do is we'll select the helmet. We're going to add a modifier to the helmet. And we're going to add a boolean, which is right here. This is basically what you're doing when you're cutting anyway. It's just a lot faster way of doing it. So we'll select to make the modifier on the helmet. We'll make sure it's an object and a difference. We'll select the plane as our object we're going to make the difference from. And usually it'll use the exact solver, but that's what's causing our problem is when it uses the exact solver, it, and I don't know exactly how it works, but I, what I know it causes, it causes it not to cut a certain section out, which doesn't help me very much. So we're going to actually going to change it to fast. Okay. Looks good. Plain object solver, fast difference. Yep. That's what we want. And we're going to apply. Now, it looks like it didn't do anything, but that's because when you use that boolean, it doesn't get rid of the plane. So what we'll do now is we'll hide the plane, and we can see we got that chin cut. We can double check that in edit mode. And we already have, we'll go hit A just to make sure everything's selected. We'll do the same process of separating by loose parts. And look at that, we do have a separated helmet. So now we've got two sections of helmet. And now we can import X, we can export everything, make manifold, and get ready for 3D printing. But that's about all I have for this video. If you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. If you're interested in checking out my most recent build journal or the sources where I got those, these two files, those links will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys have a great time making these cosplays as much as I do making them every time. Have a great day.